Hey guys, in this video I want to talk about a radical new experiment that I'm about to start implementing with the way that I approach my life. And I uh, wanted to invite you, if you're as crazy as I am, to try this experiment with me. I believe that it will make our lives considerably better, and time will tell whether or not that's true, but I'm certainly going to try it and I'm really looking forward to seeing the results. Now this experiment is based on the teachings of Abraham Hicks, which is psychographed content, or channeled content. And if you don't know what that is, then stop what you're doing right now and go watch the movie Kardec. That's Kardec. K-A-R-D-E-C. It's free on Netflix. You can probably find it on Amazon and Google Play and all those. It's a Brazilian movie, and uh, it will completely blow your mind. It will show you a dimension of reality that the vast majority of people have no idea exists, or at least the vast majority of Americans don't know exist. Anyway, so what Abraham Hicks teaches is that in order to have the best outcomes in your life, in order to get the things that you desire in your life, the best way to go about it is to focus on your feelings in the present moment and make sure that you are always feeling good and do whatever it takes to feel good. So that's what my experiment is going to be. It's going to be to do whatever it takes to feel good uh, in every present moment. Because we always have this tendency where we think, oh, if I had this and I had that, if I had a nicer car or if I had a nicer apartment or if I had a boat or if I had a relationship, then I'll be happy. But uh, you can't be happy until then. And it, you kind of get on this endless cycle where maybe you get the thing that you want and then you're still not happy. And then you invent some other excuse for why you're not happy. It's like, okay, well, I got a, a nice car, but maybe I needed a nicer car to be happy. Or maybe I need a car and a boat to be happy, etc. So the idea here is that you are capable of being happy with whatever you already have. You don't need anything else to be happy, but... If you want to have other stuff, if you want to uh, get to a different place in your life, then you're much more likely to get there if you can be happy now. Be happy with what you have. And be happy with whatever situation you happen to be in at this particular moment. And there's always a million things that you can focus on to be happy, right? I mean, even if you don't have the car or the boat or the house or whatever it is that you want, uh, there are things that you do have, I'm sure. I mean, if you're watching this video, you have the internet. That's a crazy, enormous blessing in and of itself. Probably you have food, probably you have shelter, probably you have air conditioning, right? There's probably like a million blessings that kind of escape your notice because you don't really think about them. But if you start focusing on the blessings, on rather than the things that you do have, rather than the things that you don't have, then all of a sudden it's a lot easier to be happy. But anyway, so the premise is that uh, well, what I'm going to do, my experiment, which I invite you to follow along with, is that I'm going to take, I'm going to do whatever it takes in every given moment to feel good. And I am going to believe that things are going to work out well for me as a result of that feeling good. And the reasoning behind this, according to Abraham Hicks, is that your emotions are a sort of guidance system that God created these emotions in you to show you what you actually should be doing. So under this experiment, I'm not going to do things because I think that I should, or I'm not going to do things because somebody else tells me I should. Uh, I'm going to do things because they make me feel good, because the premise is that my feeling good is uh, God essentially telling me that that's what I should do and that I should take God's word over any other words? And I think the theory makes sense. And you know, the obvious objection to this is that, oh, if, well, if you do whatever feels good, then you're just going to sit around playing video games, eating whole tubs of ice cream all day. And to that, I would say that, um, well, I mean, if you think about it, does sitting around playing video games, does that really make you feel good? For how long? Does eating a whole tub of ice cream, does that make you feel good? And um, in my, for me, the answer is definitely not. I mean, I can play video games for maybe half an hour and I'll have fun, but after that, I just have this kind of feeling that I'm wasting my life, right? It doesn't feel good to me. So the idea is that I'm going to pick up on those feelings, pick up on those emotions and recognize that they're telling me something useful. So if I feel like playing video games, then I'm going to play video games, but as soon as I feel like uh, that I feel disgusted with myself for playing too much video games, then I'm going to stop playing video games and go do something useful. 
Right, and then the same thing is true with eating ice cream that, um, yeah, it, well, it tastes good, but you're not really gonna feel good, if, especially if you eat a whole tub of ice cream, you're not gonna feel good after that, right? So I'm, I'm uh, anticipating that, and I'm, I'm going to be navigating according to those emotions, not really according to my taste buds. Again, the idea is that your good or bad feelings are a guidance system that tell you where you should be going. So if you eat a tub of ice cream and you feel bad afterwards, well, that's your body telling you that you should not eat a tub of ice cream. And if you sit, sit around playing video games and you feel like a failure, well, probably that's because you're not supposed to be wasting your life playing video games. Anyway, so I'm gonna give this a try, even though this is actually very out of the ordinary for me. Um, I've always been a very rational person and not a very emotional person. So um, for me, this is kind of the opposite of my normal way of being. I've always been very determined, I, I'm hardworking, like I always do what I, I do my duty, do what I think that I'm supposed to do. And um, the way that it made me feel was always secondary. So I'm completely turning that on its head. And you know, if the me of a few years ago <laughs> listened to me right now, uh, he'd probably think he was crazy. So if you're the type of person who thinks that everything has to be mental, that everything has to be uh, rational and, and reasoned out and all the pros and cons listed, and um, you know, th that kind of way of thinking, then I'm right there with you, right? That's, that's where I've been for almost my entire life. But, um, if you realize that you don't really know much about any situation, right? You, your viewpoint in any given time is extremely limited. And so I believe there's something to be said for putting your faith in something higher, that if you follow a certain set of rules, so to speak, then everything's gonna work out for you. And that's, that's kind of the hypothesis that I'm gonna be testing here. And there are two levels of rationale behind this for why I think it makes sense. First is metaphysical, and this is the more fluffy, the more you, you have to completely take it on faith. And that is the idea, uh, you know, as Abraham Hicks says, of law of attraction, that whatever vibration you stay in, you attract more things that are on that same vibration. So if you are, uh, if you are, gra if you are feeling gratitude, if you're feeling appreciation, if you're feeling positive emotions, you bring things into your life, uh, more things to be grateful for, more things to appreciate, more things to feel positively about. So that's a um, law of the universe that exists on a metaphysical level that is, it's very difficult to prove in any kind of empirical scientific way. So basically you have to take that part on faith. And then a, a more tangible kind of rationale um, exists as well. And that is just that if you're happy, then you probably do things better. If you're in a good mood, then you do things better. If you think about uh, the work that you've done, when you were feeling in a good mood and you were happy to be doing your work versus the work that you've done when you were feeling grumpy or you're feeling angry or you're feeling afraid, um, right? Probably the work that you've done when you're in a good mood is a whole lot better quality. You probably got it done faster and more efficiently as well than the work that you did when you were in a bad mood. And then on top of that, your relationships obviously are going to be better uh, if you're feeling better. Right? How, how much do you like to hang out with people who are complaining all the time, who are down in the dumps, who, uh, who are depressed, right? Probably, unless you're doing charity for those people, you're not going to want to be around those people because they're a drag, right? Well, the same is true for you. If you're happy and um, you're appreciative, you're going to attract people into your life um, who are happy and appreciative like you. And, and as a result, you're gonna be more likely to get jobs, you're gonna be more likely to get business clients, you're gonna be more likely to have better relationships. Like everything's going to go right for you on a basic tangible level uh, as a result of being happier. Okay, so now you understand the concept, let me tell you exactly how this is gonna play out. Like exactly what are the strategies uh, to make this happen. And so the first thing is to feel good in the morning. So whenever you wake up in the morning, say a prayer, thank God for all of the wonderful things in your life. Just take a few moments to think about how, uh, how good things are, right? You wanna feel good when you wake up in the morning and then you want to carry out that good feeling for as long as possible during the day. The second thing is you are going to 
or I'm going to do what you feel like doing. Excuse my handwriting there. This means that you're going to stop doing things because you think that you should and start doing the things that you actually feel like doing. And by the way, um, the, the exception to this is, is actual specific commitments. Probably some of my coaching students are listening to this and hoping that I feel like actually joining with them for the coaching sessions. So um, I'm not talking about specific commitments, Al although actually it probably falls under the same thing because if you break a commitment with somebody, you're probably not gonna feel so good about that. So uh, you you're gonna have specific commitments. There are things that you have to do in life, and I'm not saying to not do those. I'm saying with the freedom that you have around those things, and you probably do have a lot of freedom, Right? I mean, even if you have a nine to five job, you probably have some freedom during that job of choosing which project you're gonna work on at which time. Right? You have a pro uh, some freedom of determining when you're gonna go to the bathroom or when you're gonna go outside and take a walk. Or, uh, you know, you have, you have some freedom there. And of course, then when you get home, then you have a lot of freedom to choose what you're gonna do. So just do the things that you feel like doing unless you are absolutely committed uh, to doing something you don't feel like doing, like you have a meeting or you have an appointment that you can't break, then that's fine. Go to your meeting, go to your appointment, don't get yourself fired. And of course, don't fail the people who depend on you. Okay, now number three is if you don't feel good, don't feel good, make it first priority. Make it first priority to start feeling good again. And you can do uh, whatever you need to, to do that. One really good way is just to focus on something you're grateful for for an extended period of time. If you can focus for one minute um, on, on something that is really what going well in your life, and I'm sure that you can find something, uh, then that will help you turn your day around. Or you can start doing something that makes you happy um, but don't, don't force yourself through working, especially creative work. Don't, or don't force yourself through, um, hanging out with somebody if you're feeling in a low vibration state, if you're feeling in a bad mood, because chances are you're going to do crappy work or you're, you're not going to make a good impression on that person. You're going to, uh, put, you're going to harm the relationship. So if you're working, and then you feel bad, then figure out why you're feeling bad and change that before you get back to your working or before you're doing anything else. Make it your first priority that if you're not feeling good, recognize that something's wrong and fix that before you get back to whatever you're doing. So this is what I'm gonna be doing in my life. I'm not sure what exactly the time term is gonna be here, uh, but basically I'm gonna wait until I see a result either way. I'm expecting a very positive result from this, but uh, whether or not the result is positive or the result is my life completely falls apart and I become a drug addict and, and, and swamped with debt and with 15 illegitimate children, which <laughs> I don't think that's gonna happen. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna keep doing this until I see results from it. And then those results will tell me whether or not it was a good idea. So if you're as crazy as I am, I invite you to try this experiment along with me. And if you want some uh, strategies that will improve your life and you don't need to experiment that I can guarantee will improve your life, then check out the link below for following me on YouTube, for supporting me, for watching my videos. I'd like to give you a free gift. It's a little mini ebook called The Eight Daily Habits for Success, Happiness, and Spiritual Fulfillment. Click the link below and you can get that absolutely free. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you would also really enjoy this video all about the spiritual war that we're currently experiencing in this time of planetary transition. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon beside the subscribe button so you get all my future videos and share this video with anybody else who you think would benefit.